Welcome to the Gramophone Channel. We are excited to share with you an exclusive behind the scenes look into the legendary performance of the world of Macintosh in Binghamton, New York. This is the first part in our four part series, so make sure you stick around for more. I hope you enjoy. I know we did. All right, we're behind the scenes here at Macintosh. I'm Warren Henderson from Gramophone, and I'm here with my good friend, Charlie. And right now we're kind of getting into some of the boards that are populated here. Yep. Could you get into that a little bit for sure. us, Charlie? You're standing in the SMT area where it's the first process of the board building assembly process. The boards come in from the warehouse. Obviously the components are loaded onto the machines already, but we call up a program if we're building C53, for instance, main board, the machines will each populate the boards as they move down the side. The machines are actually universal instrument machines. They're capable of putting on 18,000 parts per hour. And in this area, we build about 10 to 15,000 boards per month. Wow. Quite a bit of work goes into it, I see. Yeah. This is only one step of the process, though. There's multiple steps that we have to go through to get the board to completion. And we can take a look at all of them if you want to. Charlie, we can go over and take a look at yeah, this. Yeah, let's go take a look. Let's take it out. Charlie, this wave solder process is pretty, it's pretty intense. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, basically what happens is you can see at the end of the machine, the boards are loaded onto a conveyor. They're carried up across. The first thing that happens is we spray flux on the back side of the board. The board is then preheated and then it goes over what is called the wave, which looks like a waterfall. It's basically molten solder that's just spinning like a waterfall and the board is set up just to skim the top of it. If it goes too low into the solder, we'll end up with a fire in the machine. If it's too high in the process, obviously we don't end up with solder right. connections and that's not a good thing. The fortunate thing is, either case, if there's a problem in the soldering process, we will catch it because every board is 100% tested. A lot of care is paid at this here level, I can tell. That's pretty awesome. But the printed circuit boards, you know, is there where we can kind of check that out? I'd like to kind of see that. Yeah, it's right over here. Charlotte, so the printed circuit board testing, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so we develop our own test fixtures in-house. Basically, there are a bed of pins like this where the board will sit on the pins. The pins are set up to hit certain test points. And the technician, what they do is they, they have a program that literally interfaces the test equipment with the jig, with all the analyzers. And really at this point, we're checking to see that the board is functioning properly. If it's the bottom board that's got an issue because it wasn't tested, now you gotta tear four other boards out. You run the risk of damaging the boards, scratching chassis, that type of thing. So it just ensures the quality and the incentive. So when it gets to final test, if there is a problem, it eliminates the board because the board's already been tested. Charlie, it seems like a lot goes into the, the boards. Are there some other processes that I should be knowing about? Yeah, there's actually um, two to three other processes. If you want to look at it that way, you want to take a look, we can walk over there. Please do, yeah. let's have fun. This particular machine is known as a radial machine and it's for through hole technology where the other machine was surface mount technology. The reason why we still use these machines is because of the power amplifiers. These types of parts that you can put on this machine are a much higher current or wattage value, so that um, conducive for what we need in our high-powered power. Amp. I got it. So I can tell there's a lot of speed and accuracy with what this allows you to do for the boards. And then I guess when it comes to this, like a special care you have to give, that you guys have hand population as well though, right? Yeah, sure. So there, there are some components that just physically can't be uh, handled by the machines. Either too large, too small, or just an odd form factor where the jaws or the suction uh, clamps on the other machines just can't physically pick them up. Sure. So we have to put those parts on by hand. This is where we put parts on that, like I said before, can't physically be put on by the machines. So they have to be put on by hand. If you notice in front of the operator, they have a drawing. The drawing is color coded. Their bins are also color coded. So really, they're just picking the component, putting it in its place, and after this, it moves over to the wave solder. Charlie, from everything I've seen so far, there's a lot of accuracy, efficiency, and care that goes into the board making process. You know, and, and elsewhere in the 
the entire factory. Right now, chassis are being worked on. Yeah, chassis and among other things. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to get into that. You know, I, I really hope that you guys like and subscribe. Come back and check out our video going over chassis manufacturing here at Macintosh. My name is Warren, here with Charlie. We look forward to seeing you on our next video. And don't forget, like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks. See you next time.